Okay, this is the video for the 548th prediction, which we never thought we'd have to make because we were convinced that 547th was correct. But, as usual, we underestimated the beauty that God can encode in his scriptures and there was more that we, that we hadn't seen, which we've now seen, which is astonishing. So, let's go through a few things that we were almost right with, with 547, but we have now proved them with 548. Firstly, Isaiah 30, verse 26, it says that um, the light of the moon must become like the light of the sun, and the light of the sun must become seven times as bright like the light of seven days. And that is a, you count that, because the seven times, seven days, and light of moon, light of sun, and must become means it, it's a period that it will take, it tells you the length of time before this great enlightenment occurs. Now in, in the previous verses you have every elevated hill and every mountain will have rivers and streams in the day of the big slaughter when the towers fall. And mountain, hill, river, stream, big, small, big, small is what's being said. So there's a day of the small slaughter, which was 9-11 when the towers fell. And there's a day of the big slaughter, which is the second and third fire sign, when the towers, towers fall again. And the, and the period between those two is defined by this count on the verse of the becoming. The moon, light of the moon becomes like the light of the sun, light of the sun seven times as bright like the light of seven days. And we thought that was 15 times, but it's not. It's 16 times. It's the light of the moon becomes like the light of the sun. So you've got two bodies, lights being compared. That counts as two times. And then you've got seven the sun becomes seven times as bright as seven more, and then like the light of seven days, seven more. So there's a total of 16 times. There's 15 suns and one moon. The 15 suns and one moon is, is 15 solar years and one lunar month. So the, the terrorist attack isn't on, the fire signs aren't on the 15th solar anniversary of 9-11, which was September 11, just past. They're that plus a true lunar month, which is 29 and a half days. So that would take you to October the 10th, and since 9-11 occurred at um, 8.45 in the morning was when the first tower was hit, to the, the Pentagon got hit at 9.43. So it was an hour, basically, of, of the three attacks on the both towers, South and North Tower and the Pentagon. So it was between 8.45 and 9.45. So this thing, 29 and a half days after that, would take you to October the 10th, 8.45 to 9.45 p.m. So we are now predicting that if, for the, the, the hour, the day, the month and the year in Revelation 9.15 terminology of um, actually of the release of the four angels or the four apostles of this church to water baptise people because it regrettably takes a terrorist act and the prediction for the same to be correct to persuade people that there might be some merit in uh, getting to grips with the understandings of this church. To say a word on that, which should probably have no effect at all until there's a fire sign, the way Satan judges people is on track record, like an accountant on, on your history, on your past. and. He gives credibility, he's a master of giving credibility or taking it away based on track record and uh, also based on press reports and stuff. And we have a, a track record of 547 failures so far, which might explain why nobody has joined the church since I started this contest, pretty much. However, and when you look at them from a satanic standpoint, we are the biggest failure of all churches in the history of prophecy by a long margin. In fact, the Roman Catholic Church deliberately stopped people speculating about Armageddon at the end of the first millennium after Christ uh, by putting out the misinterpretation of Matthew 24, 36 that nobody can know the day or the hour when the heavens and earth will pass away. Uh, they did that to stop embarrassing misinterpretations by members of their church. 
and the Watchtower did the same after their 1975 mistake in their attempt to, because that was 6,000 years after when, when they thought Adam was born, and they thought that was going to be the end on 1975 L29, but it wasn't, and, the, and they then adopted the same uh, position that the Catholics had adopted 975 years earlier, namely that nobody can know and you should stop speculating and you should give up and go home. As a result, they, they, they were punished for a bad spying report. That they must have made a committee of people after 75 and assessed whether they really think they could continue to uh, successfully predict the date of Armageddon and concluded no they can't and by doing that they gave up on God and treated him like he was impotent and they came under the mandatory 40 year spying penalty which was always going to happen because it's prophesied you don't get in the promised land without a 40 year spying penalty first. Good news is that that penalty came into force, we think, on 1976, Tishri 1, secular years, and ended 2016, Tishri 1. So they're not under that penalty anymore. They, they had about five or six attempts at, at the end, day to the end. Terrible Camping had about six. We've had 548. 547 failed, and they are the greatest achievements of this church. The great achievement wasn't that we were so clever that we could outthink the angels and decode the Bible at the first attempt. The great achievement was that although we couldn't do that, we had the faith to continue, the faith that the book was perfect, even though our understanding of it was a long way from perfect. And it's 547, 548 witnesses to our faith in God's perfection in circumstances where we are plainly blind men looking at the Mona Lisa. It is that which is my CV and the, the CV of this church. And I've always felt it was the greatest thing I've done because it's, it, it, it's hopeless in satanic terms. But the thing is that divine status is the precise opposite of satanic status. Hence Paul said, when I am weak, then I am strong. What he meant is when I had no satanic status, then I got a chance to have all the divine status I can have. And so the satanic stock in this church is at an all-time low. We have failed 547 times. We are the biggest losers in the history of Christianity as regards predictions. But the divine stock being the precise inverse of the satanic stock is at an all-time high. And the beauty we've, we now see is phenomenal. For instance, allow me, if you will, to attempt an interpretation of nobody knows the day and the hour concerning that day and hour no one knows. It doesn't say that, of course. The Greek says concerning that day or hour nobody has seen perfect tense in the past. It is not a prohibition on the future. We now know the day, it's the day of the second presence. So it ran from 1886 Tishri 16 to 2001 Heshvan 10 when the Watchtower Water Baptism ended and that, then it had a second part that ran from 20, 2006 ER 10 to 2011 Nissan 16 when Laodicea lost the 4EC Water Baptism that they'd appropriated from us. That was 120 years in total. That's the day of the Second Presence. Now, the last World War I veteran to die was Claude Schulz, who sounds more French than English, but he was in the Royal Navy. And he died ER1, 2011, 15 days after the Presence ended. And we know that the generation who fought in World War I must live till the end of the Presence, which the signs of Matthew 24 are for. So we can't push it any further than 15 days more than where we've got it right now. So there's your day. That's the day. Now the hour, concerning the day and the hour, the hour is a tenth of the, is a twelfth of the day, because it's 12 hours in a day. It's 10 years. And it's 10 years running from 2008 Nissan 14, when the heavens passed away, because that was the end of the 6,000 year lease of Michael on Adam. 
but that's when the old heavens ended and the kingdom of God heavens then began on 2008 Nisan 22, First Fruits Day, the day of the marriage of the First Presence, First New Covenant Saints to Jesus. And it runs for 10 years to the end of everything, the end of the world, when the earth of Satan passes away. The end of 1 Corinthians, at described in 1 Corinthians 15, 24, next the end when he hands so when he's brought to nothing all kingdom or authority and power when he hands over to his god and father that is 2018 nissan 14 10 years after 2008 nissan 14 and that last 10 years is god putting jesus's enemies under his feet 10 toes toe for a year and that period is the hour that nobody had seen when Jesus said the words of Matthew 24, 36, he said it on Palm Sunday, I think. Nobody knows the date of his own wedding until he's got engaged. And Jesus didn't get engaged until the Last Supper, which was his engagement. So that's why he said it then. But he knew it after he'd got engaged. There's no prohibition on future knowledge. And, and that, that is it. It's, um, it's ten years is the hour which is the time of the end. It's the time from the end of the heavens, when the heavens passed away, to the time when the earth passes away, the rulership down here. There's a ten year period, and that is a twelfth or an hour of the day of the presence, which is 120 years. Presences are 120 years because that's the maximum lifespan of a human at present. It was the length of Moses' life to the day. And uh, that was what God meant when he said in Genesis 6, 3, the spirit shall not continue with mankind indefinitely in that he sinned or he's also flesh. His days shall amount to 120 years. And they did, after Moses. But let's get back to the count of 15 years and one lunar month. So that takes you from 9-11-2001, the terrorist attack on the Twin Towers, to 10-10-2016, which will be the second and third fire signs we understand. And if it's going to be exact to the half day, to the hour, it would be, you know, around about 9 p.m. on the 10th of the 10th, this attack will occur. So that fixes our first mistake we made in the 547th when we thought it was 15 years dead. We, we didn't take account of the little moon. We had 15 suns, but we've got the moon. So now we put the moon in, you get 15 suns on one moon, and that is 15 years and one month. Incidentally, I did refer to the Revelation 9 15 where you've got these four angels who are bound at the Euphrates until the hour, the day, the month and the year of their release which is a witness to four times but first of all there's four angels secondly a day, an hour, a month and a year are four times which stand for four times because really English as an Austrian member of this church pointed out is the third language of the Bible for instance Bethany means house of, da house of dates but it's interpreted by us, and I think it's a correct interpretation, to mean not only house of the things you eat, it means house of dates that come from date palms. But in the case of this church, we are a house of dates, which don't come from date palms, but they are the dates that you have in a calendar. And date and date having two different meanings is a feature not of Hebrew or Greek, but of a Brit of English. Of course, God invented all of our languages in an instant at Babel. It's the four times of the four apostles. The, these four angels are the four apostles of this church. They have, they're over the Euphrates. They have authority over baptism because an apostle is a person baptized by an Elijah who has a transitive baptism, i.e. he can baptize someone else. And anybody in his tribe can do the same thing. The transitivity of an apostolic baptism is sent down the baptism line. That's what makes a, the greater baptism tribes, the 12 tribes of Israel, are by baptism in the greater meaning. We thought it was four years because the Zohar 2 NC Pentecost, the first one was 2012 Tishri 5, and that is when, as a priesthood, this church was able to baptize non Adamically. In other words, in the past, when you got a water baptism, it was a promise. That's, that after you've died, if you remain faithful, you will get a non-Adamic body in the resurrection. That is not the case anymore. Now that we're in the kingdom of God, and now that Zohar has begun and we're in the right time frame, 
if we baptize you, you get a non-Adamic body, you get a gene zap, and on the third day after baptism, you're non-Adamic. So you, you get a standing resurrection, you get a resurrection without dying, a living resurrection. And we, we first had the capability to do that as a church, as a priesthood on Tishri 5, 2012, and we thought, well, four years after that is Tishri 5, 2016, so that's when the fire sign must be, which releases the four apostles to start baptizing a third of the men. The reason it's a third of the men is there's 12 tribes in total and four is a third of 12. So four apostles will baptize a third of them. It says actually kill a third of the men, but it, it, it means kill to their idolatrous previous incorrect form of worship. It's a rather strange way of representing a baptism, but it, it's... I mean, they are actually killed. Funny, no, it means more than that. They're killed Adamically. Your Adamic flesh is killed. You die to Adam when you're baptized and you're resurrected to non-Adam, to, non -Adam, to actually to Isaac. You become a son of Isaac who was non-Adamic due to the baptism. So it is actually, they do kill them. You're, you're, I mean, because it, the previous way, as I say, people who've been faithful to Christians in the past die and then they get resurrected non-Adamically. Well, we do the same thing, only we don't actually die. The, f the flesh gets zapped, but the flesh kind of dies to Adam and then gets resurrected to Isaac, who was non-Adamic. He's the father by baptism of everybody in the Isaiah Church Covenant, which is the covenant that covers all churches, all Christian churches, although they have no idea that that co covenant covers them because they don't really concentrate much on genuine Bible research, believing that the Pope has done all of that, or whatever they believe, or their founding fathers. Anyway, it wasn't four years, but what it is, is four Pentecosts. So instead of counting four times that, that are four cycles of the Earth around the Sun, you count four festivals. So we get from Tishri 5, 2012, to Tishri 5, 2016, or Heshvan 5, which is the late 2 NC Pentecost. And we now expect the fire sign at the late 2 NC Pentecost, which again is October the 10th. So that's how we fix the the Isaiah 30 mistake we made in the 547th, and that's how we fixed the Revelation 9 mistake we made in the 547th. Then we come to this wonderful understanding we had, which is that to do with 777, because Tishri the 7th, 2016, was the seventh day of the seventh month of the seventh reignal year of Jesus Christ in the seventh millennium after Adam's sin, and it couldn't be more seventhly. And Solomon's temple was accepted 1026 Tishri 7. So we thought, well, this temple would have to be accepted 2016 Tishri 7, because Solomon's temple was accepted the seventh day of the seventh month of the seventh year of its construction, and this temple on Tishri 7, it was the seventh day of the seventh month of the seventh reignal year of Jesus over the kingdom, which was some kind of an antitype to the archetype. And we thought that the acceptance would be in the form of a correct prediction for a fire sign being realised, but it wasn't. It was in the form of a correct prediction for a fire sign, because we got the 548 prediction, our present prediction, on Tishri 7, and we published on, on Tishri 11. I mean, we're, of course, making the big assumption that our new 548 prediction is correct, an assumption which has proved incorrect 547 times, but nonetheless, keep on knocking and the door will eventually be opened, either that or you, you beat down the door frame, which seems to be our technique. Assuming the 548 is correct, we got given it on Tishri 7 2016. So that would be an acceptance from God because it's an answer that Elijah is asking for from God in the 1 Kings 18 contest. So if he gives us the correct prediction, he's answered us. And so, in other words, our temple was accepted, indeed, assuming the 548 is correct, on 2016 Tishri 7. And the marvellous thing about that date is that this is the second or the greater temple of Solomon. Hopefully this church has his wisdom which enables us to, well, which is what results from making an attempt to understand God's book. We are therefore the second temple of Solomon. And if you transpose the 1 and the 2 in 1026, Tishri 7, you get 2016, Tishri 7. You get from the date of the first temple acceptance to the date of the second temple acceptance. And that was really, really cute. Didn't want to lose that. And we haven't lost it. We've just reinterpreted what 
the acceptance is. I mean, plainly a fire sign from Satan is not an acceptance of this temple because it's not being accepted by Satan, it's accepted by God. So what happens on the 7th of the 7th of the 7th is God says, well done boys. Satan doesn't say that. He blows things up on the 10th of the 10th, which is the most satanic date you can get because 10 is Satan's number for administration and 12 is God's. He had 12 apostles, did Jesus. Satan does everything decimally. And you could say, from a theocratic standpoint, when Britain decimalised, this was a bad move because we changed from a sort of divinely denominated currency situation to a satanically denominated currency situation through the wonderful EU, which is the little horn that has the appearance of being bigger than what it is. At least we think that's the interpretation of, of the little horn of Daniel. We changed the, the flood. We've got a slightly better view of the flood now because, plainly, although Ark Entrance starts on Tishri 17, the 17th day of the 7th month of Genesis 8 4, which is in about three days or something, there's not going to be anybody who can go in it except for a few Lord's Witnesses for another month. So, if we've got that date right, then we will be shooting up for the coronation of the kings because the the Kingdom Gentile Times ends on Tishri 15. Russell thought the Gentile Time ended in 1914 Tishri 15 and the continuous Gentile Times did end there. Then Stephen E. Jones came along, Dr. Jones from Worldwide Church God, and he said well now there's a Maccabean gap of about 100 years and he was basically right. It's, it's 95 years from 141 Tishri to 46 Tishri from when the Maccabeans got kingship and didn't have to pay taxes anymore to when Julius Caesar appointed Herod Antipater who taxed them and gave the money to Caesar, effectively. 95 more years and it takes you to uh, 2009 Tishri 14 when Satan's lease expired. That was the end of the discontinuous Gentile time. Then there's seven years of the Kingdom Gentile times run up due to uh, idolatry with Rome in the case of FTS 1 first true church and idolatry with the UN in the case of FTS 3. So that bumped it forward to 2016 Tishri 50. So today, if we're right, is the first day in human history since the fall of Jerusalem to Pharaoh Nietzsche in 607 or 608 and the subsequent crowning of him of Jehoiakim which led to the beginning of the Gentile times. So since, anyway, since 607 Tishri, the beginning of the Gentile times, there's been no secular head of God's people. And there couldn't have been until today. And the reason we go in the ark, if we're right, just to have a look around <laughs> and to see the coronation on the 17th, is that we can, because the ark is not, Satan is not Caesar of the ark. So people who go into the ark are not under the secular rulership of Satan. And we weren't able to leave that rulership until the Gentile times had fully ended, all versions of it. And that's today, which is some momentous day. So we hopefully we meet up with Russell to talk about the end of the Gentile times. And so that's happening over the weekend. But because of that, the, the real ark entrance of, of, of sort of large numbers of people for the marriage won't begin until the marriage, which is Heshvan 17, which is a month later. So the bottom line is all this kind of delays the 300 days of Ark Entry, which are discontinuous, by a month. And what that means is Ark Entry finishes on L30, which is perf uh, 2017, which is absolutely perfect, because that's the end of the Sabbath year. Now, the Ark is God's rest. It's how you rest from this mad world, which is getting more crazy and more unrighteous and more horrible by the day. So it's beautiful because the ark is God's rest. I mean, there are several forms of God's rest. There's the kingdom of God. There's entering into a salvation covenant to be in the kingdom of God. There's the ark, and there's his Sabbath. And you, but, but the beauty is that, that ark entry is now coincident pretty much with the Sabbath. And the last day of ark entry is El 30, the last day of the Sabbath year. So in other words, to enter into God's rest in the ark, you must enter into his true church during the Sabbath, which is God's rest. So in other words, you enter into God's rest to enter into God's rest. And that, that's the kind of way this book is written. So that was beautiful. What well, the other thing that was wrong with the 547th is we had the New Kingdom secular year being the same as the old secular year, which meant it wasn't really a new year at all. And Exodus 12 requires, you know, this, this month will be the first of the month 
for you will be the first of the months of the year for you. So a new Passover requires a new calendar. And a new calendar can't be the same as the old calendar. So, you know, we were kind of overlooking that. But now we've got the Passover in Heshvan 14. So what that means is that the new calendar begins Heshvan 1. And now here is a really, 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 really deep understanding. There's a famous scripture in Isaiah 43.10. You are my witnesses is the utterance of Jehovah. And he, he says, um, And I am God. And before me there was no God. And after me there is no God. And you think that if you just look at that with a cursory glance, and it's written so that if you do look at it with a cursory glance, this is all you'll see. It's basically saying, I'm the only God, that's it. You know, before me there was none, and after me there's none, so I'm the only God. But that's not what it means at all. Because you need to examine every part or every letter of this book. If before me there was no God, and after him there was no God, what about during him? Well, during him there's loads of gods. And what does it mean, before me there was no God? He invented time, there was nobody before him. So what it means is, before he became a God. So he wasn't a God, and then he became a God. How did that happen? Well, you can't be a God or nobody. So you can't become a God till you've got subjects. And, in fact, not subjects. Kings have subjects. Priests have congregations. Gods have worshippers. So you can't be a God before you've got a worshipper. And the worshipper are his children. And likewise, after him there continued to be none. That means a time when he's got no more worshippers. Why is that? Is it because we're all dead? No. It's because we're all gods, so we don't need to worship him anymore. That's what this whole thing is about. It's to train people to be a god. Okay, this is what a worshipper is. Now, I haven't known this for a long time, and it always worries me. A worshipper is not somebody who goes and bows down before a priest or, or a statue or, or in a church. Or That is not a worshipper. A worshipper is somebody with the capability to be a god, with the capability to have perfect unbreakable love and perfect unbreakable righteousness and to grasp moral sustainability and execute it in every action he does independent of the amount of testing. A person with that capability who is not yet a god and that person will be a son of Jehovah. And that person is a worshipper. A worshipper is a trainee god. That's exactly what he is, who hasn't yet become a god. And before there are any worshippers, God is not a god. And after that, everybody's been trained to be a god, he's no longer a god. I mean, Jesus doesn't worship Jehovah. Jehovah is his god, because he was the guy who trained him to be a god. And he's his father. But he doesn't need to worship him anymore, because he's fully trained. He's a god. And that's our destiny. And God will succeed with every single person here. And I'm not going to say whether you like it or not, because he won't succeed until you do like it. And you, you have free will. All gods do. And you have to choose it. And there will be a time when you're ready to make that choice, and a time when you're not ready to make that choice. And God will not force you to make that choice until you are ready. But he will help you to get ready. So here is a really, really freaky further thing to add to this. Because the scripture says that, you know, you tested me ten times in the wilderness. God, and in Egypt, God complains to the Jews, to Israel, he complains. And those ten times were sort of ten incidents in the wilderness, which you can list, I've listed them. There's a, there's a very good website that's, that does that. Uh, and I copied them from him and put it on our website. But there's a greater meaning to it which is this, and it is quite astonishing. So, this whole contest I'm doing is a test on God. It's not so much a test on Elijah. Nobody was arguing that Elijah wasn't God's prophet, or that the prophets of Baal weren't Baal's prophets. They were saying that the test was not between the prophets, it was between the respective gods. Who can send the fire down to, to consume the bull? Is it Baal, or is it God? So this test is on God. And this test is... Can he get through to his error-prone prophet, Elijah, the correct prediction date for these fire signs of this contest? So, he was tested ten times with the tenth prediction I made. Which was made for, it was made on Tishri 11, 2006, and it was made for Tishri 11 to Tishri 14. Tishri 14 was October the 10th. 
Now if you count 10 times of testing from that, and if you count them solar, you end up on 2016, October the 10th, which is the date of the fire sign, when the testing will end. Because it will be seen. I mean, if the 548 is correct, God's already done it, but nobody knows that until the fire sign occurs and we predict it. So if, we, if it does happen on the 10th of the 10th, that will be 10 times after the 10th prediction we made. However, if you count 10 times not solar from October the 10th, 2006, but lunar from when we made that prediction, which was Tishri 11, you end up Tishri 11, 2016, which is when we published the 548. We got it on the, five, on the Tishri 7, we published it on Tishri 11. We didn't know any of this when we did this, we only just worked it out. I was just astonished. I thought, wait a minute, 10 times of testing God, what about my 10th prediction? All my predictions are a test on, can God, can God get it through to his dumb prophet? So I thought, what about the 10th one? And it, I couldn't believe it was on October the 10th, the final day of it. And I couldn't believe I made it on Tishri 11. And, and I've made the 548th on Tishri 11, and the predicted date is October the 10th. Completely astonishing. In conclusion, we expect the fire sign on October the 10th, around about 12 hours before 9-11 occurred, so 8.45 to 9.43 in the evening on October the 10th, local time. And we expect both of them, we expect an attack on the UK and on the US, local time, same thing. Actually, the third fire sign should be later, because the attendant doesn't actually say, oh look, there's a fire sign until the 6th, which is the Sabbath, the 5th Sabbath of 2 NC weeks, it's not a weekly Sabbath, it's a virtual Sabbath of 2 NC weeks. That would mean the third fire sign happens towards the end of Heshvan 5. Possibly the end of Heshvan 5, possibly the end of Heshvan 5 in US time, which is in fact Heshvan 6 UK time. In any event, both fire signs, you know, within a day of the, within, with, on Heshvan 5. One in the evening of October the 10th and the other one presumably on October the 11th. Right, there's two more things to say. One is that, that if the light of the moon is like the light of the sun, that is plainly pointing to an equinox when the light of the moon is the light of the sun in temporal terms. And the equinox is Tishri 16, September the 22nd. And that, <laughs> would you believe, is when we expect the third presence to begin by the Prince of the Army of Jehovah, who is Peter or Russell. Well, it's definitely Peter, but Russell's kind of a sub-prince. We'll meet the greater Joshua, who's fighting a Jericho campaign, which is another, another symbolism for this 1 Kings 18 battle. So we expect to bump into the 1NC kings, P Peter or Russell, or both of them, or something, to restarting the third presence at the equinox, because what Isaiah actually says, Isaiah 30, 25 and 26, it says that um, the, the light of the moon is like the light of the sun in the day that he heals the severe wound resulting from the stroke by him and binds up the breakdown of his people. And that wound is a division between the one NCs and the two NCs largely, largely. So to heal that, you've got to send some one NCs to join the two NCs. Well, that's what we think is going to happen on the 16th. So, it, it, I know it sounds completely unbelievable, but we think that this spaceship arc is um, here, pretty much, and that uh, it's the means of salvation from the disaster man has wrought, or is about to bring upon himself, although actually Satan is the main architect of it, not man. And the third presence has to begin. And we think Tishri 16 is a date for that because it's the equinox and because it's the end of 2400 days of, one, of Exodus 14, 7 plus the sentence count of 26 from the Nisan 16, 2011 second presence. This is of the cho 600 chosen chariots with a third man on each making 2400 count and then a 26 count, uh, times sentence count. We've got another witness, is what I'm saying, to Tishri 16. And actually there's another witness still in the 2,000 pigs. 
of Mark V. But anyway, it, it certainly is the equinox, and that, that will be what Isaiah 30 is saying. So, although we've had these interpretations before and been wrong, I think there's a good chance this one's right. And that's probably enough for this talk. Thanks.